Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the Home Weather Office for Thursday, February the 22nd, 2024. We have a big, big update in today's video to share with you all, as there could be a severe weather event shaping up for the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, including the potential for tornadoes, some of which could be strong. We are talking some big time hail and some big time damaging winds with this upcoming system. So in today's update, we will break down all those details so you are fully prepared. So taking a look at the European model for Sunday morning, February the 25th, 2024. So this is in about three days. And as we look at the Pacific Northwest, we have to look there first because this is where our big storm system is going to be residing from. It's gonna be from moving from Northwest to Southeast. And as we go forward in time, here it is, big time snowfall over the northern port or the Pacific Northwest, like say Ohio, if you're in say Montana, Oregon, Washington, we're also gonna be seeing some pretty good rainfall uh, for early next week for California. So more big storms on the way there, okay? But what comes next is very, very concerning, okay? And this really has popped up quickly on the global computer models recently in the last couple of days, and they have trended stronger today. So as we go into Tuesday afternoon, we can see that we are gonna have a pretty good surface flow here at 986 millibars. And with tight pressure gradients, we're gonna actually able to evac that moisture northward here. And so uh, by the uh, 1 p.m. hour, and okay, and as we go forward one frame, we can see that there is going to be the potential for a severe weather event, actually more kind of down here from the Ohio River, maybe the Ohio Valley southward, all the way down towards perhaps, say, portions of Oklahoma and say Arkansas. This looks pretty substantial, okay? For late Fe February standards, we could be looking at a severe weather outbreak potentially. I don't like using that word very uh, fondly, very quickly, but I am very confident we're gonna have a lot of ingredients coming together for a potential severe weather event or an outbreak, okay? That's a serious word. So uh, it's gonna kinda, we're right where I pretty much circled in, it's gonna be from right about in here all the way in about here for your day Tuesday. So a lot of instability, shear is going to be in place. We're gonna look at that and then eventually this could get into say portions of the Ohio Valley on Wednesday. So beginning Wednesday morning and then maybe uh, leaving the area by Thursday afternoon. But it looks like Tuesday is the big day. Wednesday is a little more uncertain because that system really moves through pretty quickly. But Tuesday is the day to really watch for as far as tornadoes go. We could see some strong ones, folks. So a lot of um, right moving supercells out of this. And then uh, beyond that, because I don't want to just show the severe weather aspects to this, we're also looking at more bigger storms beyond that, potentially for the Pacific Northwest, more heavy snowfall, especially for California. We're, we're actually talking several feet of snowfall, maybe five to 10 feet for the higher elevations. So there is the next system for California. And then look at, there's another system behind that for March 1st and the 2nd, and then maybe more behind that. So we really got to keep an eye on this as we go forward in time. And then of course, for the Eastern seaboard, you could have quite a bit of moisture too to work with. So now looking at the GFS model, as we go forward in time, we can see there is our system over Montana. This is for a Sunday night and early Monday morning. Take note, the Cascades, some of the Rockies here could see some very intense snowfall rates exceeding about two to three inches an hour. That goes further south. And look at the GFS, want some very heavy snowfall over the Sierras. We could see two to four feet out, uh, out of this system, let alone for t Monday into Tuesday next week. And then guess what? That system moves into the plains, and you can see very similar output here between the GFS and, which is the American model, and the Euro model, both showing that we're going to have a warm sector to really watch for, for tornado genesis, as well as some large hail and damaging wind gusts. And look at, this could kind of hang around here all the way through Wednesday, and that's more likely why the Storm Prediction Center is more confident that the GFS is going to pan out 
than what the Euro is showing with a much faster system on the Euro versus the GFS. And therefore, we have a slight risk out there for Wednesday morning through Thursday. Then when going forward, we also have the potential for some wintry weather across the Northeast and the extreme portions there of the Great Lakes, the northern portions that is. That moves through, quiet weather persists, back into the forecast for early March as warm temperatures and high pressure build in. But look at this, for California, more impressive storms are likely, heavy snow, strong winds. There's a little bit of uncertainty in that because if we look at the 0Z zero zero run from last night, we were looking at more impressive storms. Look at this, more big snowstorms for the West uh, as what the GFS shows there on the zero Z run. So a lot of uncertainty still remains in the models. So we will keep you updated on that. But what we really need to watch for is the ingredients here for Tuesday's severe weather event for Texas, Oklahoma, all the way to Arkansas, as well as Illinois in, into Missouri and Indiana. We have a uh, weak to moderate instability in place according to the Euro. Now the Euro again is a global computer model, so it doesn't do its best at resolving these things very well. But we do have enough instability, uh, enough lift in the atmosphere to trigger severe weather across these areas, all the way from uh, northeastern Texas, perhaps into say Oklahoma, as well as into Arkansas on Tuesday. Okay, and then when we look at the wind profiles, how much, uh, what is the wind looking like, the shear? Well, we have southwesterly flow or more kind of southerly flow in, indeed, across, the, uh, say, if you're in Indiana, if you're in the Illinois area, we also have southwesterly and southerly flow at the surface here into Texas and, say, Arkansas. When we take a look at the low-level winds, though, this is when we get the turning with height. Look at these winds. You're doing this in the low level. So we have southwesterly flow. We even have west-southwesterly flow into Arkansas. And then when we look at the 500 millibar flow chart here, we're going to use orange um, to make that, this out a little bit more. And look at We have winds that are doing this. So we go from southerly at the surface to more west-southwesterly aloft. So we get turning with height. And if you kind of think about that, you follow these arrows, you can almost make out what the photographs are going to look like. And they're going to look more kind of like this. So they're going to curve out. Actually, that was not very good. Um, they're going to curve out more like this. And that means we have a lot of directional and speed shear and a lot of venting with these storms. So we are going to have good updraft and downdraft separation if any of these storms do get going. And uh, given that we do have a little bit of convective inhibition due to some EML influences, we could see a lot of discrete storms firing up here across the uh, Illinois if you're in Arkansas especially those areas as well as say if you're in um say Missouri as well as southeastern or south yeah southeastern Oklahoma you have a good chance at seeing some discrete storm formation out of this so looking at the moisture quality we do have dew points throughout Tuesday that will be into the uh, mid to upper 50s some low 60s down here across say uh, Arkansas as well as say um, if you're in Texas into Louisiana, so not a problem with moisture and that's going to be the source of instability because we're going to have colder air moving in. So we have colder air aloft, we have warmer moist air below and so that creates instability and that's going to create our thunderstorm juice for severe weather. So when looking at this for Tuesday morning through Wednesday morning on the Storm Prediction Center, which again they specialize in severe weather. They issue these outlooks, and so we can see, I'm going to start south and work my way to the north. Paris, Texas, if you're in uh, Muskogee, um, Oklahoma, if you're in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Fort Smith, Arkansas, if you're in, if you're in Springdale, Arkansas, Springfield, um, Missouri, if you're in Jefferson City, St. Louis, if you're in Peora, if you are in Jacksonville, if you are in Chicago, Davenport in Iowa, you are under a slight risk for severe weather. I am fully aware of this. If we take a look at the day seven outlook, which is a week from today, by the way, that is pretty far out in time and they do have a slight risk out. So they are fairly confident 
that there is going to be a couple of days in here uh, that we could have a big severe weather event taking place, possibly an outbreak. More likely of that happening on Tuesday than on Wednesday. A little bit more uncertainty exactly on how the front um, kind of swings through. The Euro and the GFS have two different scenarios, but they both agree on Tuesday more than on Wednesday. And so on Wednesday, Wednesday morning through Thursday morning, Little Rock, Memphis, in Huntsville, in Nashville, um, Tennessee. If you're in Louis, uh, Louisville, if you are in Cincinnati, Indianapolis, if you're in Columbus. And yes, I am going to include portions of Kokomo, Indiana, because again, this is just a sharp cutoff. I think we might have a brief severe threat up here in that area. If you are in um, Urbana, also Springfield may be a potential there for at least a quick, brief, severe threat existing for maybe one or few hours out of this. Okay, so that's a look at the Storm Prediction Center. Now, really quickly about those temperatures, a lot of you were asking in my previous video that it is going to be almost like spring-like or summer-like. I don't think it's going to be like summer-like unless you're in the deep south, but it is definitely going to be warmer than average on any note. All the way from the Rockies eastward, so basically east of the Rockies, you will have well above average temperatures. In fact, for the northeast, you have an 80% chance of seeing temperatures above average versus in California, you have a 40% chance of seeing below average temperatures as well as in the Pacific Northwest. As far as precipitation goes, definitely a wet and cold one. Yet again, the Storm Prediction Center has done it again. A 70 to 80% chance for above average precipitation there for California, for the Pacific Northwest, slightly above average chances for precipitation for the Deep South, the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. When we look at our eight to 14 day temperature outlook, it's escalating. Look at this, for the Great Lakes region, for Northern Indiana, you have an 80 to 90% chance for above average temperature. So definitely no cold weather coming at all. Don't even think about it. Don't even wish for it because it's not going to happen. All right. For California, however, there's a 50% chance for below average temperatures and a 50% chance for above average precipitation. So all good news for snow, um, for snowfall for the mountains of the Sierra. We're going to be really adding that snowpack up very quickly here in the next couple of weeks. I'm generally excited about that because we use that snowpack for spring melt-off for the summer season to help keep our reservoirs full and replenished throughout those long summer months when it's hot and dry here. After all, it is California. We get dry season, and that runs from usually May all the way into September before our fall season and our winter season comes back with more rain and snowfall. Versus in the Midwest, you get rain and uh, rain throughout the year and snowfall during the winter time. Well, anyways, if you found this video very helpful, please consider subscribing right now for latest updates on this developing situation for the Midwest and for the Great Lakes. This has a capability of being pretty significant, folks, for Tuesday into Wednesday. Please be safe out there, and I will definitely keep you updated, but you can only do that if you do subscribe, share, and like this video to help the YouTube algorithm out very much, because at the end of the day, I do try my best at keeping you all weather aware all season long, including severe weather season and hurricane season, which are coming up. Now, before I do end the video, I have four important announcements to share with you, and the most important one is that a total solar eclipse will be happening on Monday, April the 8th, 2024, at approximately 12.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time, where I'm going to be at least. For your localized area, it's going to be a little different because anywhere along this path, the shadow moves across the United States at different times. So, therefore, it's 12.15 for me, but if you are in, say, Buffalo, it's going to be a little later. But either way... I am driving to Frederick Fredericksburg in Texas on April the 4th, and I will be there in time to see the total solar eclipse on April the 8th, and then I'll be driving back home from that. So I am so excited. I will be live streaming this. I am going to be using my drone 
to see this from the air. It is going to be a spectacular show that no one has seen yet since August 21st of 2017. And so I am very blessed and happy that I am going to be bringing you guys this live. I'll probably be live streaming my road trip to Texas as well, depending on how things go. Let me know in the comments if you want me to live stream my road trip to Texas on Thursday through at least on Saturday. The second announcement is that my first Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Outlook will be released on April the 15th, which is a Monday, at 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Different time zones mean different times, so if you're in Central Daylight Time, it's going to be at 4 p.m., and if you're in Eastern Daylight Time, it will be released at 5 p.m. And then I'll have another one for May 1st, and then May 28th with the following times on that release as well. And then my first routine tropical weather outlook will begin on June the 1st, as I stated in my previous videos, and will run through November 1st, because this season is expected to be extremely active. There are all indications of that. More on that when I do release my seasonal outlook, which doesn't look very good at all. This includes rapid updates and live streams on tropical systems as well as they are happening near shore like I did last year. Then uh, thirdly, if you all want to join the Weather Force Discord server today, there is a link in the description below this video. Hey, Saints Angel there. Uh, I, she's awesome. She is awesome, you guys. Got to meet her. Um, Butter Dog is in there. Weather Republic. Sunny is in there. Uh, Diana, uh, KORF, Lucky. Um, we got many people. We got Fire Ant in there. Some good people to meet that you all don't want to miss. Um, great server. I highly encourage you all to join it today. And then lastly, you could follow me on Twitter for latest updates. Link in description. It's actually called X, but I like sticking to the old school of Twitter. And so uh, there's a link in the description below this video if you all want to follow me there on Twitter. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow on this developing situation.